Uh, welcome to the current LAFCO Commission's uh, March meeting. And have you started recording? Recording in progress. There we go. Uh, I promised Chair Fowler that her second meeting as chair would be easier than her first. Uh, in addition to our regular meeting, the attorneys have asked for a second special meeting. Call it, for, call it a two for one special. Uh, so I'm doing this, doing what any self-respecting executive officer does when they cannot keep their promise. I'm blaming the lawyers. Right. That's fine. Yes. As this is our second attempt at a hybrid meeting, let me provide what I think will be helpful tips for running this meeting, meeting smoothly. Let me start with those who are in the room. Commissioners, uh, you have microphones in front of you. Push the button when you're ready to talk. Push it again when you're finished. It works the same way as the ones in the Board of Supervisors chambers. Applicants or public, if you are in the room, if you wish to speak, we ask that you use the podium. Allow the chair to recognize you and speak into the microphone. We are recording these proceedings and want to make sure you are clearly heard. For those attending by video conference, Everyone starts out being muted. I ask everyone to stay muted unless you are talk talking to cut down on the background ground noise. Staff and commissioners who are online can unmute themselves. The easiest way to unmute is to hold down your space bar while talking. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work, so you gotta kinda play with it. Uh, when making a motion, please state your name and the motion that you are making. Uh, for those who are an agency or the public and you're uh, on remotely, Use your, your microphone is muted until a chair recognizes you and the host unmutes your microphone. There will be an opportunity to speak on specific items on the agenda during public comments. Please use the raise hand function on Zoom to be recognized. The raise hand uh, button is in different places depending on your version and the device you are using to participate. You can also submit comments electronically by email to clerk at kernlafco.org. Mr. Rice is host and in charge of the Zoom portion of the meeting. If anyone gets disruptive, Mr. Rice has the authority to remove them from Zoom or if anyone needs to recuse themselves. Mr. Rice can place them in the waiting room and bring them back out again when the agenda item is completed. Uh, that will also happen, we have a closed session item today, so uh, we will be putting people in the uh, waiting room until that is over and then we'll bring them back for uh, open session. That will be in the second meeting of today. All votes will be cast by roll call vote. Commissioners on Zoom, please make sure you're unmuted, unmuted as we are recording and need to hear your responses. We will try to make this as smooth as possible. Hopefully, we do not have any hiccups along the way. With that, I hand it back to the chair to start the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Madam Clerk, could we hear the roll, please? I'm here. Commissioner Cox? Commissioner Solid? Here. Commissioner Hibbins? Here. Here. Commissioner Collier? Here. Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Scribner? Here. Commissioner Zervis? Here. Thank you. Um, Commissioner McKibben, would you lead us in the pledge? Follow me in the pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. Next item on our agenda is teleconference meeting requirements, <clears throat> discussion and possible minute action Meeting protocol, a motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code Section 54953E and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency in the state and that state a local official have, should be and a local official have recommended measures to promote social distancing as required by AB 361 and Section 54953E. Mr. Knox. Is my recommendation to approve finding of a state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing <coughs> as per the requirements of AB 361. Is there public comment on this item? 
Ginger, that's you. Are there commission comments or questions? I need a motion on this item. Karen Sanders moves that we approve. Sanders motion. McKibben second. McKibben second. Could we have the vote, please? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. <laughs> sure, can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next is approval of the minutes of the February 23rd meeting. Uh, is there public comment on this item? Are there commissions, questions, or comments, or corrections? I'll hear a motion on this item, please. Motion to approve, Sanders. Sanders Couch. to approve. Couch to second. Well, may we have a vote, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Commissioner Scribner? Commissioner Zervosa? Yes. All eyes. Motion passes via. Hi. Hi. This is, this is Commissioner Scribner. Sorry. So for some reason, I got kicked out, and now I'm back. So. But I, I was trying to say aye, okay. so my vote is in, in the affirmative. Thank you. Our apologies, Commissioner Scrivener. <laughs> uh, next item, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Madam Clerk, are there any interested in speaking? There are not. No? Uh, we're going to go to number six, notice public hearings. Uh, 1793 Lost Hills Utility District. Uh, Madam Chairman. Executive. Okay. If I can interrupt. Um, yes. I'm the attorney for the applicant, so I'm going to have to recuse myself on this matter. All right. Thank you, Mr. Schroeder. We'll allow him to leave, and we'll call you back when we're done. This proposal to, is to annex approximately 12.05 acres of land on the east side of Lamberson Drive and north of Highway 46. The annexation was initiated by the property owners for the purpose of gaining potable water and sewer services for the future development of the former county airport property. The surrounding properties are agricultural, residential, county park, and open ground. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. Mr. Knox. Yes. This proceeding was originally on the January Commission meeting agenda and was continued at the request of the district. The district has worked out a separate agreement with the property owners and has removed all conditions requested in the previous agenda. The proceeding is now ready to be heard. The property owner would like to build 49 residential units on part of what was previously the Lost Hills Airport, owned by the county. You might remember that LAFCO approved water and sewer service for the construction and operation of Charter School a couple of years ago. The school was in the flight path of Lost Hills Airport in violation of FAA rules. Uh, this problem was solved by the county selling the little used airport. No more airplanes potentially crashing into school buildings while taking off and landing. The issue with any development in Lost Hills is water. There is no potable water under Lost Hills. 
The district has groundwater wells several miles east of the community within the Semitropic Water Storage District. Semitropic has one of the largest overdraft issues in the San Joaquin Basis, Basin. Their groundwater sustainability plan for the area limits how much development can occur and still receive water under several scenarios. To solve the problem, the applicant uh, and the property, have, property owner have agreed to supply the residential area with water that the district cannot. This is a common practice in Southern California, but it's fairly new to the San Joaquin Valley. So the property owner is gonna supply the water themselves. And the property owner is, is a subsidiary of Wonderful, the Wonderful Company. I do need to make a correction. It says, uh, this is on the east side of Lamberson Drive. It's actually on the east side of Lost Hills Road. Uh, it is zoned agricultural. Uh, the housing on it is approved under a conditional use permit. It is consistent with the general plan. Regional transportation plans are specific plans. While it is zoned ag, it has never been used as ag, uh, so there is no land conversion. It is consistent with commission policies. The boundaries of the parcel annexation does not conform to assessor parcels, but does correspond to the tax rate area boundaries. Uh, the applicant has provided an indemnification agreement. There's no functional overlap with other agencies. CEQA was handled by a notice of exemption. Uh, taxation, uh, the services are provided on a cost fee basis, so there's no additional taxes. And the applicant has 100% consent uh, as such, the district has requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. Information provided was included in the report and recommendation. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that the commission review and consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant. It is further recommended that the commission approve annexation number 20 to the Lost Hills Utility District with the requirement of notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived and subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer without the conditions originally requested by the applicant. That's Thank you, Mr. Knox. Um, Madam Chair, this is, uh, this is Commissioner Scribner. Due to the campaign contribution limits, can someone put me in the waiting room? I, I need to recuse myself on this item. Mr. Rice, are you able to accomplish that? All right. Thank you. We're ready for public comment. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment? No? I'm ready for commission comments or questions. Anyone, anyone? All Mr. Couch? Table. Thank you. Motion couch. Do we have a second? Zaragoza, second. Zaragoza, second. May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Seller? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sarlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Thank you. Shall we invite our attorney back into the room and also Mr. Scribner? Welcome back. Uh, next item on our agenda is the preliminary budget for 22-23. Requires a vote. Consideration of the 22-23 proposed preliminary budget. The budget for Kern LAFCO is determined by the commission and funded by the County of Kern, the incorporated cities in Kern County, and the independent special districts that Kern LAFCO is designated as the principal county. With each category of agency paying one third of the budget per government code 56381B, 1A, a proposed budget is required to be adopted prior to the final budget being considered per government section 56381A. Mr. Knox. Thank you. And here we go again, another year and another budget. Let me start with the revenue side first, discuss the expense side, and finish with the recommendation. Colonel AFCO has two funding sources. A small amount comes from fees, which is about 10%, and 
and for the most part is funded by the assessment of the county, cities, and special districts, which each pay a third of that assessment. We have increased our fees schedule uh, and, brought, and brought in a little more revenue over the past year. Still, the vast majority of our budget comes from the yearly assessment. The 2020, the 2021-2022 current operating budget was what I call a zero-based budget. The overall funding uh, was the same as the previous year because of the downturn of the economy due to the pandemic. In the last year, the agencies have had time to adjust and we move forward. On the expense side, uh, salaries make up a significant amount of our budget. The proposed budget will allow salary increases for employees at the same four to five rate as in past years. We met Rebecca Moore, as a retired annuit annuitant, is only able is only with us on a temporary basis. Typically, this arrangement only lasts about a year, but the governor has relaxed these rules a bit due to COVID. Nevertheless, Ms. Mrs. Moore is coming up on a year helping us out. Uh, going to the next fiscal year, she has requested an hourly increase from $35 an hour to $50 an hour. This will be mm -hmm. offset by Lily Moore, uh, who will be leaving us in May. You'll be leaving the reception position open uh, while we are training uh, the new clerk. Uh, our retirement uh, plan for staff is provided through CalPERS. LAFCO's been paying the normal costs associated with employer retirement and minimum unfunded liability payments each year. Last year, the commission dedicated 25% of the yearly carryover to be paid to reduce the unfunded liability. This was about $20,000 last year. In the report, including your packet, the unfunded liability was listed as tentative based on the previous year's amortization report. After discussing with CalPERS actuary, the payment will not be considerably less than projected. It takes them a while to update their, their system and uh, bring that number down. Workers' comp and general liability insurance has jumped up in cost by 37%. It's pretty significant. Employees' health insurance, though, is, has a 3% increase. Uh, memberships will be down. This covers the California Special District Association and the Kern County Special District Association membership. There's been no communication with the new executive director of CalAFCO, uh, so there's no reason to consider rejoining CalAFCO at this time. We are not in any, any negotiations with them to return at this point. In office expenses, we need to increase uh, this due to the need to replace several computers in our office. Staff were able to keep, keep older computers operating and use outdated current cog, current cog laptops to get us through the past two years. We're also planning on eventually having our own website, which will take eventual equipment and software. Rents and leases has increased slightly, uh, as was part of the five-year lease agreement that we signed three years ago. So this is a, a normal part of that agreement. Professional and specialized services covers, covers legal counsel, accounting, audit, HR services, KGov or Kern TV for the guys in the back, uh, county services, and stipends. The increase includes monthly IT services to keep our system running and safe. Transportation and travel. While there will not be travel to CalAFCO events, I will be work in Sacramento working on uh, California Special District Association legis legislative activities. Uh, there may also be opportunities for training for the new clerk and continued education for the deputy executive officer. We have a policy of a 10% reserve policy. 10% 10, 10 reserve plus accrued sick and vacation time. Based on the most recent payroll, the reserve will increase approximately $5,000 over last year. Is my recommendation the commission accept the draft 2022-2023 budget and use 25% of the carryover from the 2021-2022 fiscal year to pay down, pay down the CalPERS unfunded liability? Thank you, Mr. Knox. Is there public comment on this item? No. Uh, may I hear commission comments or questions, please? I'll move the recommendation, Mrs. Couch. Couch, motion to approve. Do we hear a second? I had a second, Harley. Oh, I'll come to you. 
Commissioner Parlier, second. Uh, discussion, Commissioner Zaragoza. Um, I had a couple questions. Um, the, uh, I think the first question I had, I think you've answered it, that the, uh, based on your understanding from, I guess, CalPERS, the unfunded liability required contribution is going to be about the same. The uh, minimum payment is, is going to be about the same. At most, it'll be $2,000 less. So it'll be about $69,000. But I don't have a specific number yet. I will have that before the final budget. And, and uh, when do you plan to bring back the final budget to the commission? Next month. Okay. The uh, budget has to be done by June 15th. Uh, by doing it in April, if something goes wrong, we can always bring it back in May, but we can't go into June because our June meeting is after June 15th. So um, I try to do it a month early, so if there's any issues or things that we need to address, we have time to do it without rushing our way through it. Right. So April is a tentative target date. Unless you say otherwise, I'm no. bringing it back next month. Yeah. Yes. That's just curious because uh, that will give you plenty of time in case there has to be an adjustment or anything. Um, regarding the memberships, um, I think last time we talked about this, uh, we were going to revisit that. I do know they don't have a, an executive director right now. I assume they're recruiting. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but the question I have, is there a way to get a, a price point on a membership fee for CalAFCO in the interim? From CalAFCO? Yeah. So uh, CalAFCO has hired a new executive director. Oh, they have. They went, they've, According to the website, they started sometime this month, here in March, so they are brand new. Um, I have had some conversation with other LAFCOs. Uh, not much has changed there as far as um, their consideration of how their uh, due structure works. And frankly, no one has reached out to me to, to join. I should also say that I am I'm able to track legislation and be involved with that process through CSDA being on their legislative committee, uh, which is legislation is the biggest threat to, to LAFCO. Right. State legislature is a threat to us. Um, surprise, surprise. So um, in that instance, with where we currently sit, I do not see us um, applying for uh, to come back into CalAFCO at this time. I understand that it was, I think last year, the fee price might have been as much as the $10,000? Correct. Something. Okay. I'm curious to know if it's feasible for you to reach out, just contact them and ask them what would it be for this 2022-2023. I'm not saying that we're going to be going, going, going ahead and renewing that membership, but I'm just curious what that number is. And I, I will bring that back to yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. And otherwise, fine. On the recommendation, I think it's it's wise to uh, pay down the unfunded liability. Um, you said 25%, okay. 25% uh, of the carryover. carryover. So at the end of the year, we have some funds left over. Um, uh, what, ha what happens is that that is taken out of what the assessment is. So let's say we have an assessment of $600,000 uh, and we have $100,000 left over, the assessment will be $500,000. So out of that $100,000, we take 25% out, it'd be $25,000. Um, of course, that would be, assuming everything is as predicted, <laughs> we don't have any major hiccups financially. 25 percent. It, it's kind of like a, is it a hard target or kind of a soft target? Well, it, it is what it is. So when we get to the end of the year and we know how much money we have left over, uh, we do, okay. I, I make that calculation just on paper. It's not okay. difficult. So, uh, because that, that ends up being what's left in the county account. <laughs> it's a residual number. Okay. Good, it is. Good. All right. I was just curious how that, because you don't, you don't do it up front, you wait toward it, everything's kind of balanced out. And Correct. Kind of see what, where everything lies, and then you do it. Okay. Yep. All right. That was it. Are there additional, <coughs> sorry, additional questions or comments from commissioners? We have a 
Motion and a second. Could we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Dollar? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Collier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Sturgis? Aye. Commissioner Zervis? Yes. All items. Thank you. Item 7 is determination proceedings. We have none tonight. Uh, eight, we have commission items. Uh, policy committee background. Mr. Mount Knox. Yes. At the last meeting, Commissioner Zaragoza requested additional information about the standing committees. Over the past five years, the policy committee has met twice, including your packet is information about the issues covered by the committee. The biggest issue that I see the policy has addressed, the policy committee addressed is the definition of substantially surrounded. For the most part, this only affects the city of Bakersfield and its many unincorporated areas in the metro area. Currently, the city is focused on unincorporated areas that are completely surrounded and using the island annexation uh, provision to move forward. We have four of these in the works currently. In the five years that I've been executive officer, the budget committee has not met. I have chosen to address any budget issues in open session like I just did, and for all indications from the commission, my justification for expenses have been acceptable to commissioners and, and agencies who fund LAFCO. Uh, this is an informational item. Are there any commissioner questions or thoughts? Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, as far as uh, counting islands substantially surrounded, is it uh, pretty much all going to be taken care of with the four that we're looking at, or are there going to be some left over? Do you know? So the four that we're looking at are all completely surrounded, okay. so the definition doesn't apply. Okay. Once we get they get through all the island annexations they want to do, we're going to probably start having a conversation again about substantially surrounded areas, which means that they're not completely surrounded by oh, okay. um, the city. By the city, yeah. correct. And whether you decide that's a certain percentage or you know, how big an opening there is. Uh, at the end of the day, what will likely happen is they will bring one to us that is substantially surrounded but not completely closed. And once there's a decision made on that, a precedent has been set. And so even though that doesn't completely hold the commission to say, you know, anything under that uh, would work, it does give some boundaries to them of what they can bring and what they can't. Their concern is bringing one, spending a lot of time and effort on bringing one to us and having it turned down because we don't have a definition. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how we got there. And it's up to each, each LAFCO to, to create their own definition. There is not one in the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act. I, I'm uh, under the impression then we're just going to wait until the city approaches us with proposal. Well, we have, we have new management at the city. As you're aware, uh, the conversation we had was with previous management. So maybe we will have um, some breakthroughs uh, having conversations with them about, about this issue. And, and I think you and I did chat that the city is in the process of updating the general plan. Correct. So they might be looking at talking about, about certain issues regarding they, they definitely have growth issues, and uh, some of these outlying areas that are unincorporated will stop them from growing in, in some of the directions they want to because it's, they can't be contiguous without taking in some, some unincorporated areas. Right. Uh, so it, it does become an issue for them. I'm aware that the State Housing Authority has requested that the city of Bakersfield build at least 30,000 new homes over the next 10 years. Uh, they're going to need room to grow to do that. They're also going to need water, but that's another issue. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's a lot of homes in the next 10 years. So. All right. Thanks. Appreciate that. Thank you. Are there further commission comments or questions? Thank you. We'll go on to general business. 
approval of the monthly expense list uh, 20-02. I have nothing to you add. You have nothing on that? Uh, this was in our packet. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there, Mr. Couch? I'll move approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Sanders. Are there questions or comments before we vote? Could we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Springer? Aye. Commissioner Berger? Yes. Thank you. And now, Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items. Yes. <laughs> uh, at the last commission meeting, I thought I was going to come today and introduce you to a new clerk, administrative assistant. That hire has not been made yet. Um, I have I made an offer that which was refused. Uh, I've got a couple others that also I thought were close and decided that this wasn't the job that they want. So um, I'm hoping to have someone soon. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Rebecca Moore won't be with us forever, and the more I can utilize her to train this new staff member, the better off we are. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, sphere of influence reviews. We do a questionnaire to every city and every special district that asks them a considerable amount about their sphere of influence. Uh, whether they want to keep it the same or expand it over you know, the next few years. Uh, this is kind of the starting point to that. We will be bringing these before the commission over the next couple, couple months. Uh, so that's, that's a fairly big project for us. Last Friday was the deadline for uh, nominations for the special district seat. Um, we have four, four nominees. Uh, the ballot should hopefully go out either tomorrow or um, early next week. So we hope to have that, uh, and the deadline for that is April 30th. So for the special districts, uh, they've got a little, you know, about five, six weeks to get it, get it finished and to us. We have had issues in the past. We have roughly 96 special districts, and we need a quorum of those, meaning we need 48 or whatever it is, or 49. I can do the math. It's 49. We need 49 to actually uh, provide us votes for the election to be uh, valid. So and we've had issues before trying to get enough, enough people to, to vote. Uh, so we're working on that. Uh, and the next couple of months are going to be pretty busy for us. We've got a number of annexations, uh, we've got the spirit of influence, and we've got a number, number of projects moving forward. So we're, we're going to be busy. And with that, that's into my report. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Um, our next scheduled meeting will be, regular meeting, will be April 27th. And we're currently adjourned from this meeting, but we will have a special meeting that will follow immediately. Chair, while, while we're here, I would like to introduce someone that's in the audience. Please. Uh, McFarland City Council member, Sal Ion. Uh, he has been nominated to be uh, the city's, city's uh, selection to be on the LAFCO Commission starting in May. And he's joining us today just to kind of get a feel of who we are and what we do and appreciate him coming today. It'd be a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having us. So let's, do you want to have me go ahead and open the following meeting the way we normally do? Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, open it. All right. Uh, welcome to our second meeting of the night. This is the special meeting for March 23rd, and it's a special notice regarding remote public participation. Mr. Knox, do you want to go ahead with that reminder again? Um, I'm getting to it. That's <laughs> so as, again, my recommendation to approve finding of a state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing for the requirements of AB 361. All right, may we have the roll, please, Madam Clerk? Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Cox? Commissioner Fowler? Here. Here. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Carlier? 
Here. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Strickland. Here. Commissioner Zaragoza. Here. Thank you. Teleconference meeting requirements. Discussion and possible minute action, meeting protocol, a motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code 54953E, and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency in the state, that a state and local official have re a recommended measures to promote social distancing. All is required by AB 361 and Section 54953E. Sorry, I jumped ahead. You did. I did, sorry. Uh, this is the part where I read, approve finding of state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing per the requirements of AB 361. I'm not going to read that, my part again. No. You all heard it, that's yes. it. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we do need, this is a vote item, so we do need a, um, a motion and a second. Motion to move ahead. Sanders, motion. Second, McKibben. McKibben, second. Are there comments or questions from commissioners? Could we have the vote call, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Yes. 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 And I didn't hear Commissioner Crump's name called that time. I see. Oh, gotcha. All right. All right. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Is there anyone interested in speaking, Madam Clerk? Anyone in the room? So the regular agenda has open session first and closed session last. Um, yep, yeah, I want to introduce Isaac St. Lawrence, who's sitting in the gallery there. He's the um, the attorney representing us, but he's primarily the attorney for the Buena Vista Water Storage District, who is a d defendant along with us. Uh, we have an, a uh, joint defense agreement with his um, uh, client, and so he's representing us. Uh, what, we're, what we're doing here tonight is, and I'll, I'm gonna turn it over to him to explain it. Uh, there's a, um, this is a writ of mandate challenging our uh, CEQA uh, proceedings in the uh, annexation that his client requested. Um, <clears throat> it, the a CEQA writ of mandate is tried on the, the administrative record, everything that was presented to us. Uh, and so that gets put together. It's a, a large amount of documents. Uh, what we have to do is we have to then certify it so that the court knows that we've looked at it, we're satisfied that it's complete, and they can move ahead with um, uh, handling the litigation. Um, before you move any further, um, we probably need to remove some folks to be in closed no, session. No, not yet. Right? We're not in closed session yet. We're not in closed session. No, no. I want to make sure. And let me, let me explain that. Um, if you want to discuss the um, administrative record, or if you want to discuss in detail the, uh, the litigation, we have a closed session item that w we can go into closed session either before you make the decision to certify the administrative record or if you want to uh, uh, make that decision now, uh, because it's a lot of documents, <clears throat> you're not gonna be able to read through them. Uh, uh, and then we can go into closed session afterwards to have more discussion with Mr. St. Lawrence. It's entirely up to you. But I'd like to turn it over to uh, Isaac to see uh, if he has anything to add to in the open session. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. It's probably more appropriate to do that in closed session as this is ongoing litigation. Um, but as was already stated, this is a process in any CEQA litigation is the certification of the administrative record. In this instance, the petitioner, the plaintiff, 
they elected to prepare the administrative record. So they put all the documents together, got it over to my office, and then it was onto the printers. And then we've got that all prepared. So now we just have to go through this step of the commission certifying the record. And is it your recommendation that it, they do certify it? Yes. I take prerogative here, I think, and close the current session and open closed session. You want to go into closed session? Yes, please. Okay. Could well, then we we'll have need clear yeah. the public uh, and anyone else who is ineligible to stay for closed session? Yep. No one else. Restart the recording. Recording in progress. We're reopening our open session regarding Kern Water Bank at all local agency formation commission. Let's go to uh, Attorney Schroeder. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I would recommend that there be a motion to uh, certify the administrative record in that lawsuit and that the executive officer be authorized to sign the certification. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Oh. Sanders. Sanders motion. Do I hear a second? Second, McKibben. McKibben second. Could we have, are there further discussion questions or can we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zerger? Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We're adjourned.